Can you hear me now? <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to our Christmas Eve candlelight communion service. We're so happy you could be here with us tonight. Boy, it is freezing out there, and yet uh, we are warm inside as we come together. You know, Christmas is an amazing time to spend time with loved ones and to come together on a night like this to celebrate the birth of our Savior. And so we thank God for all that is ours in Christ Jesus, and we come together tonight to give him honor and glory. Once again, I'm glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the Christmas Eve prelude. We uh, special thank you with much appreciation to Carol Worley, our organist, our brass members, Barb, Colin, and Nathan Ernst, Aaron and Benjamin Philippi, and our pianist, Rosalie Redkay. A few announcements before we begin. There will be only one service tomorrow, no Sunday school, and a combined service at 9.30 a.m. For those of you that are able to make it out, uh, certainly understand if you can't. Uh, we will be here, though, and we are streaming our service tomorrow as well for those that uh, can't be here in person. Uh, the altar flowers are presented to the glory of God in honor of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, by Sue Race. The bulletin is presented to the glory of God in loving memory of Ronald J. Redkay by the Ernst family. And the ornaments on the choir rail are presented in memory of loved ones by Jim and Robin Lash. Now, Jim said, uh, if you're going to be here tomorrow, uh, to, to leave it. But if not, one per family, you can take it with you. They're on the, uh, the rail over there behind Carol. And uh, thank you to everyone who placed the poinsettia. Uh, plants may be taken after the service tonight. And with that, I will turn it over to Doug Sewell for our call to worship. Please join me in tonight's call to worship. The people who once lived in darkness have been given a great light. Praise be to God who has heard our cries. Our souls sing out God's praise. God has brought us a light of hope and peace. Tonight in this place, the light of God's love is given to us and we shall see that light and let it shine through our lives. Amen. We have the lighting of the Christ candle by Benjamin Philippi. His marvelous work among all the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Thank you, Ben. Our opening hymn this evening is hymn number 285 in your hymnal, or I'm sorry, it is uh, 249, O come all ye faithful, 249. Please stand and join me. Oh, uh -huh. 
adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exultation. Oh, sing all ye bright hosts of heaven above. Glory to God, oh, glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Yet, Lord, we greet Thee, born this happy morning. Jesus, to Thee be all glory give. Word of the Father, Thou in flesh appearing, O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him. O oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. You know, the church is the, the vehicle that God uses to bring the faithful together. It's an opportunity for us to come together to grow in knowledge, faith, and love for God and for one another. It's an awesome privilege for us to be able to worship freely as we do. It's something that we should never take for granted. And I'm mindful of those that faithfully give time, talent, and treasure to help us to do all that we can do to reach men and women, boys and girls with the love and grace of Jesus Christ. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do. It is greatly appreciated. Let us pray. Father God, we ask that you would bless the gift and the giver. We thank you, Father, that we have an opportunity that we can come together as a community of faith to not only to worship and praise you, but to present you to a world that's lost in sin, to a people in desperate need of a Savior. It's in our Savior's precious name that we pray. Amen. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We've added a couple of extra hymns tonight so we can sing the carols, and uh, I, I really believe it helps us to, to get into the Christmas spirit as we sing the carols, as we praise God for this precious gift that's been given, as we anticipate the return of our Lord and Savior again one day to bring everything under order that we might be together with our Savior and our loved ones that have gone on in faith for all eternity. Let us now sing hymn number 285, O Holy Night. 285. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long may the world in 
sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn Says a night divine, a night when Christ was born, a night, a holy night, a night divine. Serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star, sweetly gleaming, here came the wise men from over the King of kings, thus in lowly manger, in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our need, to our weakness is no stranger, he your King before or in lowly bent. Behold your King before him lowly bowed. Truly he taught to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall see. of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name forever his power and glory evermore proclaim his power and glory evermore proclaim You know, we come together for a Christmas Eve service and tomorrow, which is rare for a Christmas Day service, and we have all of these memories of growing up in Christmas and all that it means to us, and you know, I'm mindful of loved ones that aren't with us this year. We mourn their passing, and we look forward to seeing them again one day in glory. And I think about all of the things that makes Christmas special, but for me, I think this is the most favorite of all for me, coming together and worshiping in a candlelight service, singing hymns and praising God 
for his precious gift, his son, our Savior. Let me pray for you, friends. Father God, I, I thank you for Jesus, our Savior and Lord. We thank you, Father, that he came into this dark, sinful world. He put on flesh and he dwelt among us. He lived, he died, and he rose again. We're told that even now he intercedes on our behalf. And so, Father, we give you praise. Father, we pray that you would be with each of us, those that are here, those that couldn't make it, that we might indeed have that extra measure of your presence, that we might feel your love, that we might have the desire to love you back, to, to know you more, and to proclaim you to a lost and hurting world. Father, we pray for those that mourn loved ones. May they find comfort in your presence. May they find the assurance of life eternal through your son, Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for this privilege together this evening. Bless us. Surround us in your care. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us even now, Father, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our praise hymn tonight is hymn number 251. It came upon the midnight clear, 251. song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from heaven's a gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Till through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly plains they bend on hovering wing, and sounds the blessed angels sing and ye beneath life's crushing load whose forms are bending low with joy along the climbing way with painful steps and slow look now for glad and golden hours Come swiftly on the wing, a rest beside the weary road, and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on, by prophets seen of old, when with the ever circling years shall come the time foretold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing wonderful I can remember when I was a young lad, not terribly long ago, but uh, a girl, it's getting longer every day, I know, uh, growing up in Baltimore, and the, the highlight of our Christmas Eve was going to Midnight Mass at St. Anthony's. And uh, me and all my friends in the Gardenville area, we would all get together, and we would 
go to midnight mass and uh, had a beautiful service, candlelight service. And uh, I think back on that now, and I'm not sure if I could do that now. I'm not sure I could make it to midnight. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful, no matter what time, that we can come together, that we can sing praises, we can worship the King of kings and Lord of lords, and how wonderful and marvelous is that. Our scripture lesson tonight is uh, from the Gospel of Luke. It's familiar, it's the Christmas story. And uh, it's a marvelous story uh, because it tells us the length that our God was willing to go through to usher in the new kingdom, to, to bring his son, our Savior, into the world. And so Christmas is almost here, and in reality it is here, for God lives in us. That is the gift of Advent and the incarnation that connects the love of God with a people walking in darkness. You know, the mistake that many of us make is that we're distracted by the magic of the season when what is actually occurring is the miraculous. The miracle of Christmas is just one choice away. You know, will you mistakenly yearn for snow and gifts, family, or will you lift up your hearts to the miracle, the true meaning of Christmas? Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your holy word, a, a lamp unto our feet, a, a light unto our path. Bless the reading of your word and bless this message. Unite our hearts and love for you and for one another that our desire would be to proclaim you, your son Jesus, to those that we meet, and you give us opportunities each and every day to share our love for you. And so, Father, increase our love and our resolve to share you with the world around us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. In January of 1956, Jim Elliott and four other missionaries gave their lives in Ecuador in their efforts to reached the Wadani, the Aqua Indians. This fierce group was known to attack any outsiders, but the vision for reaching them with the gospel compelled these young men to take the risk. Not long after they set up camp near the Wadani village, they were attacked by warriors, and refusing to defend their lives with force, the missionaries were killed. The news flashed around the world, and the story of courage and sacrifice challenged many to take up the missionary cause. Even today, Eliot's words live on. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. In a very, in a very real sense, Jim Eliot and his missionary friends were living the spirit of Christmas. They were willing to give up the comforts of home and promising careers, and to ultimately lay down their lives to take the gospel to those who have never heard. They could have fought back to defend themselves, but they chose not to. This is what Jesus did for us coming to earth. The Apostle Paul wrote, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you could be made rich, and truly we are rich in Christ. Anything we could ever hope for is found wonderfully in Christ Jesus. You know, nothing of lasting significance and importance for God is ever accomplished without great sacrifice. You sacrifice the cold weather to come out here tonight. You know, whether it's our time, our talent, our treasure, or even our lives, we must be willing to give up what is temporary for the sake of what is eternal. You know, when we do, we are following the example and pattern of Christ Jesus and walking in his footsteps. Here, the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke. We know that Mary was betrothed to Joseph to be married, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, she was with child, not an ordinary child, but the Christ child by the power of God, and at that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
and all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. And he traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. And he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will be great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, and lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. And when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And they hurried to the village, and they found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. And the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. We give thanks for the glorious word of God. Now Christmas is and always has been about making room for our Savior. And often in our hectic and busy lives, we, we lose sight of the real reason of this season. You know, some need to receive God's precious gift of Christ Jesus as their Savior. And Lord, perhaps they've never done that before. And there, there are so many in the world that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. While others perhaps need to remove some of the things in their lives that hinder them from receiving Christ Jesus into their lives. Pastor Bob Clearsey, one of our EC pastors, uh, he was a pastor of my home church in Rosedale, Maryland, and he always used to say, if you're too busy for God, you're, you're too busy. And I, I know how hectic our lives are, but I know how rich and full my life is with Jesus. And I can't imagine not having daily contact with my God. It's a special blessing that we can not only know him, but we can talk to him in prayer. We can receive uh, from him his word through the written word and through the guidance of his Holy Spirit. And so we come together to worship our Lord and Savior and to make room in our lives for his presence. And all of the characters of the Christmas narrative had one thing in common. They all made room in their lives for God. From Zechariah and Elizabeth, to Mary and Joseph, to the shepherds, to the wise men. They all made room in their lives for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Their initial response was fear, and yet the angel Gabriel assured them, do not be afraid. You know, I know that one day we'll, we'll come together in eternity, and we'll see our Savior face to face, and for those that have Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we'll give an account of our lives, but we have nothing to fear. If we have Jesus, we have everything that we need. You know, the truth is we are a fearful, needy people because we think that life needs to be perfect for us to be not afraid. And truth of the matter, there's a lot to fear, but the absence of fear has nothing to do with the circumstances of life, but the, the conditions of our hearts before God. And if you've made room in your life for Christ Jesus, you can live in peace no matter what's going on in life. We can cry out to our God and we can share with him all that we're struggling with. 
And we can have the assurance that he hears and that he answers and he provides for all that we need in his way and in his time. You know, everything that God has promised to a people looking for the light of life has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus, good news of great joy for all people. A Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. And tomorrow we will come together once again to celebrate the birth of our Lord as we look forward to his return one day. You know, if Christ Jesus has indeed been born in you, then you need not fear the world or the current circumstances of the world. I know a lot of people are fretting now over the cost of heating fuel and just the high cost of everything in general. And yet I know that there is not one need that we face or one fear that we deal with that God is not aware of. And he is working out his plan of redemption for all of mankind. God is in control. All things are indeed possible with God. The wonderful gift of Christmas is that we have Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord if we're willing to make room for him in our lives. I know how hectic things can be. And yet I know that for me, I have a, a special time and privilege of calmness by starting my day in prayer, by starting my day in devotion and, and reading the word of God and talking to God as I go throughout the day. You know, making room for Jesus is to understand that it is all about him. It's not about us. We want to make everything all about us, but the truth of the matter is it's about him. It's about Christ Jesus and him crucified. We are more concerned about making room for Jesus and we should be less concerned about self. You know, the greater will understand the wonderful gift of Christmas. You know, the birth of Jesus is a wonderful love story of God and humankind united. To be favored by God is to be willing to be used by God. I was uh, talking to one of my dear friends in Ohio. We were texting, and she was asking about what time the, the service was tonight, and she uh, said how she really misses us. And uh, I said, you know, really, plans don't always turn out the way that we'd like them to, but I trust that where God has us, God can use us if we're willing to be used by God. You know, I can't even begin to understand what it must have been like for Mary and Joseph to travel the 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, considering Mary's advanced condition and perhaps riding on the, the back of a donkey. I can't even begin to understand how hard that trip must have been. And, you know, we consider her advanced condition. We consider the, the pains of early labor. And yet uh, they were allowing God to use them where they were. You know, it's easy to make room for our Savior when the conditions are right. Anyone can do that. But to embrace the gift of God, we must be willing to receive him no matter what is going on in our lives. You know, Mary and Joseph put their fears aside, and they simply trusted God. That's a great place to start, is to simply trust God and realize no matter where you are in life that he is indeed with you. He's working out the details. But you need an element of faith. You know, the thought of God coming into the world to bring hope, peace, joy, and love to a wayward people is amazing. But to imagine that the world that he would come to be born in was nothing more than a cave, a barn, a stable, which to prepare for the quickly approaching arrival of the, the son, the, the son of man, the, the God's son. And Phyllis and I have been talking about this for a couple of days, you know, what was it in a cave? Was it in a barn? Was it down below the inn where the animals were kept? We, we perhaps don't know the reality of that, and we speculate that the, the birth of our Savior probably was sometime in late September, early October. We have designated December 25th as the day to celebrate our Lord and Savior because there was a pagan ritual of lights that took place around the same time, and so we sought to bring people out of darkness into the true light of God. And so we've designated December 25th as the day to celebrate. You know, the stable was most likely cramped with animals from the visiting crowds that were there. And we know the people coming together for the census that uh, it was overflowing with people at this time. 
Now, I always loved to, to go to the state fair every year when I lived in Maryland. And uh, I loved to, to see the animals, and it's an amazing thing. But the first thing you notice before you see the animals is the smell. <laughs> it, it's just, uh, unless you grew up on a farm, uh, it, it is offensive to, uh, to us. And, and yet, this place of manure and animal urine was probably the last place we'd ever imagine for the King of kings and Lord of lords to be born. And, and yet that was God's prerogative. God's son would come into humanity on our behalf so that we could know the love of God. And he came to us in this simple way and perhaps even to the shepherds, the, the lowest people in society at that time, to let us know that he was for all people. It didn't matter if you were Jew or Gentile. For all people who would believe. You know, it's hard to imagine why, and yet we know why. Most people were so busy with all that was going on with life at the time, they had no room in their busy lives to make room for God. You know, despite the difficult journey, the less than perfect conditions of life, I can almost see the face of this young teenage mother meeting her baby boy for the very first time. She was probably exhausted, and yet as she lovingly gazed at her first child, she was gazing into the face of God, and he was looking back at her. Can't you just imagine the Christ child wrapping his tiny hand around her hand? in her heart as well. He was her son, and yet he was the Lord of lords. He was her baby, and yet he was the king of kings. She could not take her eyes off of him, so great was her love for this child. And the greatest miracle of all was that he did not take his eyes off of us. His love for us was profound, and even to his dying breath, he demonstrated the depth of his love for all of us. You know, God came to our rescue. The angel said, do not be afraid. Do not take your eyes off of the true meaning of Christmas. Know that when Jesus was born, that he was born for you. Allow the baby in the manger to wrap his love around your heart. You know, I want the Christ of Christmas to consume your heart, your mind, and your life so that we can wrap ourselves around this precious gift that has been given. You know, the shepherds of the Christmas story spent weeks in the fields with their sheep sleeping under the stars in wind and rain. I can imagine them huddled cold and shivering around a campfire while trying to stay awake to guard the sheep in their care. You know, I'm told that the, the life of a shepherd was difficult and oftentimes dangerous. They were the lowest in the world's view on who's who, and yet their world would soon change. Unexpectedly, heaven exploded into the small, cold, and dark world of the shepherds. And the angels appeared into the war zone of earth to announce the good news of great joy for all people. A Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And the heavenly chorus continues to celebrate today every time a new, a new believer comes to Jesus as Savior and Lord, we're told that the, the angels in heaven rejoice. It's all about making room and, and believing in our hearts that God has indeed done for us what we could not do for ourselves. You know, Jesus invaded this dark, cold world with heaven's joy, and it's still his gift to us today. His presence in your life Make shepherds dance and angels sing. Your heart can become an explosion of joy because of the birth of a baby over 2,000 years ago. You can rejoice because of Jesus. You can walk in peace because of this wonderful gift of God, regardless of what's going on in your world, because we have the Savior of the world. You know, each of the people who had the favor of God fall on them, they were willing to allow the Savior to interrupt their lives. They made room for God. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to allow God to interrupt our lives? Are, are we willing to devote some time to seeking and serving and loving and proclaiming Jesus as Savior and Lord? 
You know, we're told that Mary treasured all that God had done. The shepherds returned home. They were glorifying and praising God for the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And you know, the, the reality is the, the world, those in Judaism, were looking for the Messiah for a long time. There's over a hundred references in Scripture of the, the coming Messiah. We'll take a look at that tomorrow from the prophet Isaiah. And to experience and be filled with the joy of Christmas, we too must be willing to make room in our hectic, busy lives to receive the gift of God. You know, the truth of the matter is, is God is waiting. He's knocking at the, the door of our heart and asking to come in. And nobody is brought along kicking and screaming or against their will. We all have a choice to make. We can choose to receive and believe or we can choose to reject, and, and many do reject. Don't be afraid. The, the Lord is with you. And be filled with joy as you make room for our Savior, knowing this, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your holy word. We, we thank you for the Christmas narrative. We, we thank you for those that were willing to set their busy lives aside to, to focus intently upon you and receive your son as the Messiah, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we, we admit if we're truthful that we oftentimes are so busy with life that you often take a back seat in our lives. Father, help us to renew our commitment and our desire to know you, to love you, and to proclaim you. We, we thank you for first loving us. We ask that you would help us to love you more. For these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We have a hymn number 277, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, hymn 277.
Alrighty, we're in a quandary here. <laughs> I'm not going to do the message again. If you want to, I could, though. Would that be good? <laughs> All right, we won't. How about if we sing another hymn? Uh, hymn number 287. It's a communion hymn. Wait a minute. Alrighty. A communion hymn for Christmas, 287. There's too many services too quickly. <laughs> Come together to receive Holy Communion together. All we ask is that you've received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, that you've invited him into your heart and life. And with that, we can come together and we can receive the bread and the cup, a visible reminder that our Savior lived, that his body was broken, that his blood was shed, his life was laid down for us, that we might have communion with him now and for all eternity. Friends, tonight we remember and we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, the Son of God who came to us as a helpless babe born to set the captives free. Those first invited 
to witness this event where a group of poor shepherds, they were not highly educated, they had no gifts to bring, they did not have fancy clothes, but an angel proclaimed to them, a savior has been born to you. Tonight, we come as unworthy as those shepherds to witness and receive God's amazing grace and love. This table is Christ's table. It's not my table or the evangelical congregational church's table or the table of this congregation. It's the table of the Lord. And all who wish to know and love him are welcome here. Whether your faith is strong or wavering, whether you come to church often or you've never been before, you're welcome here. Tonight, a Savior has been born for you. Welcome him into your life as Savior and Lord, and that same Savior welcomes you to this sacred meal. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You see, we serve a majestic God whose compassion moved him to send his only son from heaven to earth. The son born in a stable lived and worked among us. He taught, he healed, he served, and he loved. The son loved so much that he died for us, that he rose for us, and he lives for us even now. He ascended to heaven where he is our mediator, interceding with the father on our behalf. Before that, he broke bread with his disciples, and he simply said, do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, and he drank, and he simply said, this is a new covenant. Therefore, in remembrance and in celebration, we can eat the bread and drink the cup. We proclaim our Lord's death and life until he returns in glory. You see, Christmas is the promise, but Easter is the proof. Tonight, we humbly come to remember that our Savior came into this sinful world, that he put on flesh and dwelt among us. He lived, he died, and he arose again that we might have life and life abundant. We will celebrate the Lord's table together, so please wait until everybody has the bread, and we'll receive the bread together, and likewise with the cup. I invite the ushers to come forward at this time. Decisions.
Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Eat with gratitude in your heart. This cup is the new covenant sealed by the blood of Christ, which was shed that the sins of many might be forgiven. Drink from it, all of you. Let us pray. With joy, we praise you, gracious God, for you have created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us. Even when we fell into sin, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came among us as the word made flesh to show us your glory full of grace and truth. 
Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your holy name. Amen and amen. We're going to light our individual candles as we prepare to sing Silent Night. Lit candles remain upright. Unlit candles can go sideways. We want to keep them upright so that we don't spill wax anywhere. So please be careful with your candle. This candle is lit from the Christ candle. And each of the ushers' candles will be lit from that.
But if you turn in your hymnals to hymn number 253, Silent Night, Holy Night. extinguish your candles at this time. Let us read the benediction together. It's in your bulletin on the bottom after Silent Night, Holy Night. Tonight, as we celebrate God is with us in the birth of Jesus, let us continue to live lives of hope peace, joy, and love. Share God's love with the shepherds you meet on the hillside. Let the communion of the Holy Spirit fill your heart with glad tidings like the angels. And the Prince of Peace, born again tonight, may he live in your heart to comfort and challenge you as you seek to live as one of his disciples. Amen. We're going to close out this service with hymn number 270, Joy to the World, Two. Seven zero. Let earth receive her. 
Christmas, friends. For those of you that are able, we'll be here at 9.30 tomorrow, Christmas Day. If you can't make it, I understand. The Lord bless you and keep you, protect you, and continue to seek and serve Him with all that is within you. Amen and amen. Thank you for all you do. Well, you got a whole year to practice, so we'll be good. <laughs> it, all in all, it went pretty good. So. I didn't get two feet on the 